Well, this is not Roots by Alex Haley, but it may turn out to be a major mini-series. Hi, I'm Scott Ott, and this is Bill Whittle Now. And Bill, I know it's painful for you to do so because we just did an episode yesterday about the transcript that's been released, uh, that President Trump's phone call with the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Um, today, though, Bill, I want to take a, a completely different focus, which you unwittingly segued nicely to at the end of the previous episode. So if you need to, ladies and gentlemen, um, stop the tape right here on your Betamax and go and look at <laughs> yesterday's show first and then watch this one, although they can be watched completely out of order with no impact whatsoever. Uh, so here's the issue, Bill. Can I, can um, I interrupt that this edition of, of Bill Little Now is brought to you with limited commercial interruptions? <laughs> That's right. But but other kinds of interruptions in, in profusion. Um, so this this is uh, this is what I'm looking at now, Bill, because uh, we focused on the transcript and the release of the transcript. But the day before that transcript of the phone call was released, Nancy Pelosi announced for the first time that uh, Congress in, or at least House Democrats uh, in six committees were opening impeachment inquiries, um, pursuing the idea of filing uh, articles of impeachment against the president of the United United States. Now, I don't want to dwell on, on that so much, although we can talk a little bit about it. But the real issue is, Bill, um, th with an impeachment inquiry going on, and then possibly the filing of articles of impeachment, and then possibly a trial in the Senate over these articles of impeachment, how does, uh, first of all, for starters, how does Donald Trump run for re-election when every single press opportunity he has is going to be nothing but questions about his impeachment. If if from this point forward until 2020, every single question that Donald Trump gets is a question about impeachment from the mainstream media, Donald Trump will carry 50 states. How so? Because this is precisely the kind of thing that, Don, this is not the kind of thing, this is precisely exactly what we've seen with the Ukraine thing, exactly why Donald Trump with his manifest flaws has been elected by the American people and why people like you and me, your real, your real you, champion him so aggressively. It's not that this, we, it's, we don't feel that this man is a man of uh, unimpeachable moral character or, or, or of, of extremely uh, sophisticated manners and grooming. We understand what Donald Trump is. We understand what his flaws are. But Donald Trump is the first politician in the modern age to understand that the enemy of this country is not Russia. It's not China. The enemy of this country is an elite group of individuals who think they get to decide what the American people can hear and not hear. It's people in the news media. It's people in the Democratic Party. And if it weren't for the Internet, we would be having President Clinton's second term now, or, or first term, Hillary's first term of endless terms, of, 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 end, of, of endless terms. This is what Donald Trump is for. This is what he's built for. It's what he's constructed for. And we found him in a rusty old dump someplace in the in a, in a back of a garbage heap mounted uh, called, called uh, The Apprentice. And we found this guy. He found us, really, mutually. And we realized that this guy who had an understanding of television and an understanding of media, had understanding especially of Democrats having done New York deals in real estate, an understanding of how low people can go to get what they want. And this man rose up and the American people rose to meet him and elected him to stop this, this ongoing, just endless determination on the part of the left to not only tell people what to do, but when they get up on their hind legs and don't do what they tell them what to do, like elect Donald Trump, let's say, then to make sure that they not only punish the American people for the next four years, but maintain an absolute incessant flow of, of constant disinformation, trying to undermine the credibility of the man elected by the president uh, as president by the American people. Bill, it sounds like, uh, and, and let me just uh, ask you two questions here. Number one, uh, do you not think somebody could hear that and think, gee, it sounds like Bill is saying that impeachment is the greatest gift that the Democrats could possibly give to the presidential reelection prospects. And then question number two related to that, Bill, is what flavor is that Kool-Aid you're drinking? Impeachment proceedings would be the greatest gift that the Democratic Party could give to Donald Trump. And the answer is fruit punch. That's the only kind of Kool-Aid that's worth drinking. It's delicious, by the way. It is very delicious. <laughs> so seriously, Bill, it, it, the way you're selling this, it's uh, are you whistling past the graveyard or do you actually believe that he couldn't ask for a better gift from Nancy Pelosi? I actually believe that he could not ask for a better gift from Nancy Pelosi. I actually believe that. What we saw in 2016 was was Donald Trump's election by people who I, I like to say this because it's it's a it's a clever turn of phrase, but I think it really illustrates the the issue. 
Donald Trump was predicted to lose the election. When they, when they took a poll of likely voters, Donald Trump lost by six or seven points. Donald Trump wasn't elected by likely voters. Donald Trump was elected by unlikely voters. And that is the fundamental issue. In 2018, the people who elected Donald Trump did not come out in sufficient numbers to prevent the Democrats from taking the House back. But number number of different issues, 2020, Donald Trump is back on the ticket again. And and every single thing that we believed in 2016 when we took a chance on Donald Trump, and that's what we did, every single thing that we believed that, that convinced us to take a, tr a chance on this man turned out to be true in front of our eyes. FBI directors lying, CIA directors lying, uh, just the, the, list of, the list of high level transgressions is in itself astonishing, but the list of high level trans, uh, transgressions covered up by the government of the United States of America is absolutely shocking, disgusting, and disgraceful. So if they want to continue to crank the handle on this ice cream machine, I say go for it. Go for it as fast as you can. Not only should you call for his impeachment, you probably ought to call for his execution as well. Go ahead and do it. If you want to If you want to find a way to get people excited like they were in 2016, look, they're going to come out in 2020 anyway, in droves. But Donald Trump's position in 2020 compared to 2016 is immeasurably better. And if they decide to throw this impeachment thing in after, especially after this Mueller uh, charade comes back empty handed, then I say, go for it, Nancy, go for it. And I think the person you ought to lead to, you ought to tap to lead the, um, impeachment proceedings is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I absolutely 100% on my knees beg you, beg you to launch uh, impeachment proceedings in the House and please put AOC in front as your spokesperson for saving our democracy. Uh, Ilan Omar was uh, part of that that squad, the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez freshman uh, Democratic Socialist squad, uh, was one squad. of the first to rush to the microphone after their behind closed doors meeting with Speaker Pelosi and before the announcement um, that she was uh, now pushing for a, um, an impeachment inquiry. Uh, Bill- hey, Hang it, on, I always get confused. There, there are four of those people in the squad. The, the one you mentioned, Omar, is she the one who married a brother and would have been uh, put to death under the Sharia system she's trying to install in the United States? You know, States? when I walk past those tabloids at Walmart, I just look the other way and I focus on paying for my order and getting out of the store. Uh, I'm, just so trying to, I'm just trying to put a face on the name. Go ahead. Yes. I, I, uh, she, has, she wears a lovely headdress. Um, yeah, I know so the one. This is, uh, here's, the, here's the battle as it's shaping up politically. Now, let's forget about the whole you know, legal aspects of it or anything. Nancy Pelosi comes out and makes the announcement that she she is saying Democrats are going ahead with an impeachment inquiry. I don't think I've heard a Democrat use the word republic so many times in such a short period of time as did Nancy Pelosi during that announcement. And they didn't really capture that in this quote I read this morning, but um, I'm, I'm quoting Nancy Pelosi here that she says, this is not a partisan matter, but no, it's about, not. quote, the integrity of our democracy, respect for the rule of law and defending our constitution. A bill, she, on the one hand, with the Democrats is saying we're defending the Constitution and Republicans, on the other hand, say we're standing by the guy who's being impeached. Doesn't that sound like we've just reversed the fortunes of the two parties? Well, first or of all, you can you can claim whatever you want to claim. Claiming something is true and not and, and then not doing it is somewhat common in the world of criminals. If you if you've had any experience in that particular uh, group of, of human individuals. So the fact that she says she's doing this in defense of the Constitution is the same thing as the guy. I saw this on cops saw it with my own guys. A guy was under a bridge. He was a drug addict. He had a needle in his arm. The police went up to him, shined a flashlight on the needle and said, what's that needle doing in your arm? And the guy said, that's not my arm. <laughs> Honest to God. So I'm not impressed by Nancy Pelosi coming out and making these claims. She can claim whatever she wants to. She is going to do what she's going to do. I actually still at this point, I would be, a, I'd be a little surprised if it actually did happen only because it would be so catastrophic to them. You but mean look, the actual Scott, impeachment? Launch, they're going to launch an investigation. No question. They're going to go through the whole thing and they're going to stand up there like Jimmy Stewart and talk about the Republic that they don't understand and talk about the constitution that they've, that they've, their actions have voted to destroy. Put all that aside. What this particular incident has done is simply increase the contrast and sharpen the blades on the scissors that's becoming American life. That's what it's done. It has made the Donald Trump 
uh, supporters, bigger supporters, and it has made the people who hate Donald Trump hate him more. Whether or not this moves anybody in the middle, I don't know. But I got to tell you, if after two years of Mueller and these serious accusations of, of collusion come up blank, then, then it's going to be a lot harder to convince the average American that this isn't a witch hunt. And let me add one thing that's very important to this. I suspect that Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi are going to deeply regret throwing this boomerang because I suspect that what is going to emerge, as with the Mueller report, is not only Donald Trump is not guilty, but that the people who were involved in making him look guilty are in fact guilty of serious felony crimes and belong in jail. So we're going to see whether she wants to talk about the rule of law. Great. I would like it very much if the judge would read that sentence to her as he's sen sentencing her to long prison term for violation of the rule of law. I don't expect to live to see that day, but you know, you got to have a got to have a dream about Bill, something. as you framed the scenario here and with the number of Democratic uh, congressmen increasing literally minute by minute who will support a, a vote for articles of impeachment. Um, it was that funny how they move in a herd like it that. was that 155, 24 hours ago, it's over 200 now, um, although still very few, if any, Republicans, perhaps Justin Amash behind that. Uh, but all of that said, Bill, um, this and we did a long episode yesterday. We're going to do a short one today. Uh, uh, this is really my final question. You're a Republican congressman. You're a Republican senator. You are running for office against a guy um, who is in the process of being impeached. How now do you conduct your campaign when your previous plan was to say, hey, low unemployment, strong around the world, we're all for Donald Trump. If you like Donald Trump, vote for me. How do you conduct yourself now in that local district? Well, first thing I'm going to watch is watch my donations skyrocket when I say I supported Donald Trump before this witch hunt. I've been on record as supporting Donald Trump since he's been president. But watching this inversion of justice, this ongoing perpetual destruction of a sitting president duly elected by the American people has made me triple down my um, my admiration and respect for the president. And furthermore, I am going to absolutely determine to lead a charge into looking into the investigation. I want to find out what happened after this thing settles and Donald Trump is not impeached from office because that is the outcome that's going to happen. I don't think there's a Republican out there and God knows I think these are largely very spineless people. But on this one, there is so little evidence that that this, even if it did happen, that it's, that it's an impeachable offense, that I think even Republicans, politicians, are going to stick with the president on this one. It's not like... The, it's not like Watergate where you had the president guilty on tape. And it's not like uh, uh, Clinton Gate either where you had the president on tape lying on camera. They have no evidence and, and it's not and he's not guilty. So there you go. I would stand by him. And the more I stood by him, the better it would go. And I get final piece of advice to Nancy Pelosi here. You know, if you're going to it's an old, old, old adage in power politics. But if you're going to try and if you're going to try and uh, shoot the king, you better kill him. You know, you'd better kill him. They're taking pot shots over their shoulder. And somebody who I like and admire very much once told me a story about a guy who pushed a gun up against another guy's chest and said, I feel it's only fair to warn you, sir, that at this range, I seldom miss. And if you're going to take down the president of the United States, you better have a gun with six rounds in it and you better have it pressed up against his eyeball because if you fire that weapon and you miss and they're going to miss, then you are going to regret that decision in a very big way. Well, the analogy that Bill just made will seem like just such a thing to the members at BillWhittle.com who have made this show possible. However, to the thousands of people around the world who are watching this on YouTube, thanks in it wholly because of the membership dollars that come from these members, we hope you weren't confused by the metaphor there. And we do hope you will check out the possibility of becoming a member at BillWhittle.com and drinking deeply from the well of truth that comes from this channel. If you'd like to find out how to do that, go to BillWhittle.com and click that become a member link. For Bill Whittle, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks for watching.